Good afternoon, or morning or evening, wherever you are. Sorry I haven't made videos in a while. I actually was busy getting a job. So, I recently got hired by Liberty Mutual, um, only for an internship, but uh, nonetheless, I'm happy. Um, I'm confident that it will lead to a full-time position. And, uh, just something to say, uh, don't, don't give up on applying to jobs. I had to apply to, I would say at least 50 and got rejected by pretty much all but two. Uh, flew out to Seattle for an interview with Liberty Mutual. Uh, they offered me the job right after and uh, I'll start the internship in June. So uh, hopefully I can pass FM before that. That's the plan. Um, I'm the oldest intern you've ever known. <laughs> I'm 31, so there's hope for you. Uh, keep applying. Don't uh, be discouraged by rejections. And uh, just keep doing what you're doing. Keep working hard, and uh, I'm confident that you can make it happen. All right, so uh, the mission at hand here is um, to answer this question. Uh, I'll put, of course, the question will be at the beginning. Uh, this is from the SOA exam P. Um, this is requested. Definitely a tricky question definitely tricky. So this is the sort of general setup here. Um, I've defined two random variables. I have X, which are going to represent uh, the losses under a policy one. Uh, those losses have a deductible of one. And Y is, are the losses under policy two. Those have a deductible of two. Ones with ones, twos with twos. Um, anyways, X and Y are independent. Um, the usefulness of that given fact is that we can write the joint PDF as the product of the two marginal PDFs. Uh, X and Y were given to be um, distributed uniform uh, over the interval 0 to 10. 0 to 10, 0 to 10. So I can multiply 1 tenth by 1 tenth and give me 1 over 100. There's my joint PDF. Um, we're interested in when is the, well, the probability that the total benefit paid is less than five. So I have another random variable, t, which I've called the total benefit paid. And I want to basically give a representation for t. This is one of the tricky things here. So a t is a piecewise defined uh, random variable. Okay, so t, uh, let's think about this for a second. Um, when could the total benefit be paid be equal to zero? So um, if you think about it, uh, this is representing both policies. And they, by the way, they told me that there's a loss, exactly one loss under each policy. So if uh, both of those losses, um, the first one, policy one is less than, than one, and policy two, is less than, um, policy two is less than two, then it could be zero. So again, if uh, we have the following situation, if we have zero uh, less than x uh, less than one, okay, uh, and, uh, 0 less than y less than 2. All right. Um, when will the, the uh, total benefit paid be positive? Well, it could be equal to uh, x minus 1 um, if, right, the, the losses under policy 1 minus the deductible, if uh, the losses for policy 1 um, are greater than 1 but less than 10, of course, um, and uh, the, the losses for y are the same, between zero and two, okay? I want the losses um, for the policy two to be less than deductible while the losses for policy one to be exceeding the deductible. We could also have um, y minus two. I remember that policy two has deductible two, so if they exceed two, we definitely have to pay something. So if, um, in this case, we're gonna have zero less than x less than one, policy one is less than deductible while policy two exceeds but less than 10. And then we could have um, both of the losses exceeding both of their re um, relative deductibles. Uh, this would be um, a, a loss where we pay x minus one plus y minus two. So in other words, x plus y uh, minus three, right? We have a deductible one, deductible two. So the total loss uh, for both minus three, this is gonna be if um, one is greater than x is greater than 10 uh, and 
Uh, we also have to have here uh, 2 is uh, less than y is less than 10. So kind of a nightmarish uh, random variable t there. But um, we want to use this actually to answer our question. And you should hopefully are thinking here that this is a uh, joint um, uniform distribution problem. So of course you have the picture, you should do that for any joint distribution problem, but we hope we don't want to take any integrals. I just want to use geometry, no integration whatsoever. That's just too much work, especially when you see the region we're going to have. All right, so now let's um, attack the question we have. And um, a little bit annoyed with the amount of room. So, um, the question we're after here is the following. Let me come up here and get rid of these details. I think we, we know them by now. Okay. Um, we want to know when is the total benefit, specifically, what is the probability that the total benefit is, I think the way they worded it is at most five. Uh, it does not exceed five. Actually, for continuous random variables, it doesn't matter. The answer is the same. But what we're looking for here is, um, let me write it over here. We want the probability that t does not exceed 5. All right, so that's what we're after here. And um, I recommend doing this kind of thing. What I'm about to do, I recommend you do this on a lot of type of problems uh, that, I, that you run into. Okay, but let me show you what I mean. So when is, just look at, don't forget the probability. Forget the probability. Just think about t less than 5. So when is t less than five. Go through cases. I'm just gonna do one, two, three, four. We'll go through each of these four. So if, if, look at this one first here. Uh, well, it's definitely less than five if, if x is less than one and y is less than two. I mean, it's zero there, right? So if, um, number one, number one, if you want, you can even uh, enumerate these. I'm gonna just do that. So let's call this uh, one. So if, so looking at this sort of row here, this line here, if um, zero is less than x less than one, and zero less than y is less than two. All right, or when else is t less than five? Well now look at item or row two here. Now be careful here, we want to be less than five, um, but we have a x minus one, right? If this quantity, because this is t, t equals x minus 1, if this is going to be less than 5, then x has to be less than 6. So, so for 2, this is x less than 6, but greater than 1. 1x, 6. I, don't, I can't go all the way to 10. I mean, if x is 10, then the, the total benefit paid is actually, what, 9. So no good. We want to go x between 1 and all the way up to 6, because I'm subtracting 1. So this tells me the total benefit would be at most five here. And for this region here, for this row, y is still between zero and two. So hopefully that makes sense. Take some time to think about it. You may want to write out some more details. It could help you. Um, or or uh, item three, so looking here, y minus two. So now I want to look at y minus two. When is, so remember t is y minus two on, this, on this, these conditions here, right? When is y minus 2? What values of y is y minus 2 actually less than 5? Well, that means y cannot exceed 7, right? So we're going to have 2 less than y less than 7, and uh, x is still between 0 and 1. All right, one more to go. So or uh, item number 4 down here. Um, now, this is the, the tricky one, I think. Um, when is x plus y minus 3 less than 5, right? Because t is equal to this, uh, given these conditions. Well, first thing you think about um, for this one is, um, again, x, uh, x cannot exceed, actually, a 6 again. x cannot exceed 6, okay? Uh, because if x exceeds, exceeds 6, the deductible is 1, that means that payment right there is already going to be uh, greater than 5. So we have several conditions here. x cannot be greater than 6. Uh, x less than 6. What can y not be greater than? y can't be greater than 7. Now let's deal with the sum. 
uh, x plus y minus 3 is less than 5, which means x plus y is less than 5 plus 3, which is 8. So I have those three conditions. I claim once we draw the appropriate picture, we actually have everything we need. We have everything we want, everything we need for this problem. In life, <laughs> different story. All right. So um, let me draw each region individually. So this is 0, 1, 0 to 2. So here's my situation here. This takes care of the first, uh, the first piece. So this is going to be these sort of blocks. Right, so there's 0, 1, y is from 0 to 2. Now I have x is 1 to 6 and y is 0 to 2. 1 to 6 and y is 0 to 2. Okay, that takes care of that. And now I have um, y goes from 2 to 7 while x is between 0 and 1. So all the way up to 7 here, all the way up to 7. All right, uh, and y is between, uh, y is from 2 to 7 and x is between 0 and 1. And then I have this, x less than 6, y less than 7, and x plus y less than 8. If you've been studying for exam P, I mean, you graph this in the xy plane 1 million times. I mean, all you do is graph these types of linear equations, right? So hopefully you're familiar with it. Um, it's going to look something like this. Um, this is going to be, this is the line y plus x equals 8. Okay, now we have to be careful though, actually, because um, we also have these conditions. X is less than 6 and Y is less than 7. So if X is less than, than uh, 6, it, it cannot include this. I need to get rid of that. Y is less than 7, so it cannot include that. So it really is going to just sort of, actually it does intersect right here, and I'm going to take care of this. Find the area of the black, divided by the area of the entire red square, and we're done. That's it. So I can answer this question. Again, no integration necessary. Uh, we may have to um, write down a few measurements here, right? Because um, this is kind of a weird shape. I guess we need to know the area of a trapezoid. So uh, you could just know the area of a triangle, actually. But I'm going to do trapezoid. So this right here is uh, length 1. Um, this right here is, this is 2 to 7. Um, so this is actually uh, length 5. So how convenient, there's a five right there. That's a length five. That's length five. Uh, this right here is length six, okay? And then this length right here is two. So <clears throat> I'm just gonna do the area of the rectangle uh, plus the area of this trapezoid. So my answer for the probability that T, the total benefit paid is less than five is the following. Okay, probability t less than 5 is equal to uh, the area of the rectangle is 12 plus the area of the trapezoid. Area of a trapezoid is 1 half times the height. The height is 5 times the sum of the bases. 6 plus 1 is 7 divided by the total area. This is always how you compute probabilities using normal distribution, uh, joint, um, is 100. Uh, so what you should get here is, um, well, this right here is uh, 35 uh, over 2. Oh, man. I can't remember. I don't know. Do this on the calculator, and I believe what you get is 0 0.295, right? Uh, so this is approximately 0 0.3. I can't remember. I think the one of the answers is not, there's not one of these answers, I don't believe, uh, but you get uh, I think point 0.3 is one of the answers, uh, 3 tenths. So there's your answer. Uh, hopefully this was helpful. Tell me what you think. Um, thank you. Thank you for subscribing to the channel and liking the video. Until next time.